What's going on everybody? Curtis Wilkerson with Hogsports.com coming to you live from just outside the Grand Bohemian Hotel here in Birmingham, Alabama, the site of SEC Basketball Media Days. My second time out here, it was awesome the first time. It's been awesome again. Uh, such a cool deal where you have representatives, coaches, and players from all 14 teams here convened in one location to preview the 2023-24 basketball season. Uh, exciting times. It's kind of like football media days where you know when that rolls around, it's like, okay, we're getting closer to transitioning from talking season uh, into the actual action on the gridiron. Same thing here, a lot of talking, a lot of writing, a lot of projections, but we're getting closer and closer and closer to some actual basketball. You know me, you know I'm excited about this. So some really good stuff today. Hey, Arkansas is picked to finish third in the SEC by the media in the preseason poll uh, behind a Tennessee and Texas A&M teams that return, quite frankly, their entire roster. So um, I, I think that's fair. You know, it, it's interesting that this preseason stuff, um, it's about respect, right? It's about respect. I mean, it, it's fun to talk about. Uh, but it doesn't really mean anything in, in the grand scheme of things. I thought, you know, Lamont Paris, the South Carolina head coach, made a really, really great point when he was asked about South Carolina uh, being picked to finish dead last in the conference this season. Uh, and he said, hey, look, you go back and look at last year's projections, uh, and guess what? None of the teams wound up finishing where they were projected to. That's a really good point. <laughs> so, so everybody wound up getting it wrong. Uh, and, you know, Arkansas, Injuries factored in, of course, but uh, they're a prime example of that. Arkansas was picked second in the league last year. They wound up finishing 10th. Of course, they went on to, to beat the defending national champions and go to the Sweet 16. Uh, but, but the point remains there. Uh, so, you know, the Hogs, Eric Musselman, I think that they've earned some respect in this league. Uh, I think people, the voters, they realize the talent that's on this roster. But, hey, you know what? Take it with a grain of salt uh, until the ball's tipped off and, and, the, and the bullets are flying live. So, um, man, the SEC, I think it's going to be a really, really deep league this year. And a lot of coaches have been talking about that. Uh, welcome to the transfer portal era, man. Like, the rosters can get reloaded and flipped in a hurry. Teams who have really struggled can get a lot better. Uh, and those that are at the top can maintain uh, because it's just a free for all in the offseason I think you might get eight to nine teams in, in, in the NCAA tournament out of the SEC uh, but to speak to the depth again like Georgia's Mike White I thought he made a really really interesting point he said hey look Georgia predicted to finish 12th by the media in the SEC but if you go look at the Ken Palm rankings that were just released Georgia's 57th in the country so if you put those two things together essentially what that's saying is a team that's projected to finish near the bottom of the league standings is also projected to be on the bubble for the NCAA tournament. Uh, that's kind of crazy if you really think about it, but it's a testament to how much stronger this league has gotten in basketball over the course of the last few years. Like I said, I, I think you might get eight to nine teams in. If I, if I really look at it, I think you've got a clear top tier in the SEC. If you look at Arkansas, Tennessee, Texas A&M, Kentucky, and Alabama, that top five feels really, really solid to me. But you can go beyond that with teams that can crack into that group and could be really, really dangerous and tough out. You think about Auburn, Mississippi State, it's got a lot of guys coming back. Auburn has kind of revamped that roster. Uh, Florida, did a really good job in the transfer portal. I think Todd Golden's a good coach. Uh, Missouri, hey, you know, they're riding a lot of momentum on the recruiting trail. I think Dennis Gates is doing a great job there. Uh, so really a, a loaded league. It's going to be some exciting basketball in this conference this year. Uh, hey, Arkansas had both of their All-SEC guys in the building, right? Trevor Brazil named first team All-SEC. I think that's awesome, man. Uh, you know, if you really think about it, he played nine games last season, right? And he, he don't get me wrong, like he looked great while he did it, but he didn't play in a single SEC game. So to be voted uh, as a first team guy, that tells you that, that people have high expectations for him. They recognize the talent. They saw that his stock was on the rise. Um, man, that, that's got to make you feel pretty good uh, about where you're at. And it, and it probably, you know, lights a fire under Brazil himself. In fact, I know it does because I asked him about it uh, earlier today. Devo Davis, second team. It's the second time in his career that he's been a second team honoree. Um, 
and, and, it, and it's, it's crazy because a lot of times you see them rely on returners heavily uh, when they do these media polls and these media teams at the beginning of the year because that's just who people are familiar with. Uh, not so many transfer additions, uh, but we know the impact they're going to make and we know the damage that, <laughs> that Eric Musselman did uh, in the portal this season. You know, there were coaches around here talking about L. Ellis. John Calipari, uh, Calipari was one. Um, you know, he had to prep for L. Ellis last year when Kentucky played Louisville, uh, and Ellis hit him for 23 points. He was 6'10 from the field. He had four steals. That was a name that, that Calipari certainly remembered. So um, it, it's just going to be a lot of fun to see this team come together, see what they're made of. Uh, man, but to talk about the guys who were here, it, it was nuts. I'm telling you guys to see the crowd of people around Devo Davis. He had to have been in the top two or three of all the players that were here today in terms of the amount of media members and writers that surrounded him at his podium when he was up for an interview. There's just something about Devo, right? Uh, you know, his, his, his ability to shine in the moment. We see it every single March, right? And, and so the question with him becomes, can he carry that March Devo? Can he bottle that up uh, and sprinkle that magic throughout the course of an entire season? Because he's been a little bit of a slow starter in the past, but he was so good during SEC play, really came around as a shooter, and, and we know what he does in the NCAA tournament. Uh, man, if he does a full season of that, Arkansas is going to be in business. Uh, it was crazy to hear some of the things about him. You know, he's one of eight four-year players in their same program in the SEC. There's only eight guys in this conference who have been on the same team for four years. That's crazy. It's just a dying breed in college basketball, and I think it's a shame, but it makes Devo a really unique case. Uh, and we asked Eric Musselman about that, and he was firing off some crazy statistics alongside it. You know, he's got 379 minutes in the NCAA tournament. Uh, he's played in all 11 NCAA tournament games of his career. He started seven. He's never played fewer than 25 minutes in those games. Uh, man, he's just a, a guy who's ready uh, for the moment. Uh, and I think Arkansas put an emphasis on adding that type of experience uh, around him to supplement him a little bit once they get to March. You know, he mentioned Tremont Mark, uh, a guy that came from a great program in Houston. He's been a part of eight NCAA NCAA tournament games. Uh, uh, Chandler Lawson, you know, a, a grad transfer from Memphis. He's been a part of four NCAA tournament games. I think, if I remember correctly, Musk said that there are 30 games of NCAA tournament experience sprinkled throughout the roster. So, boy, if, if, if they get to March, and obviously we all expect that they will, uh, this is a team that's been there, done that, and should be able to perform and, and be up for the moment. You know, Trevor Brazil had a really great conversation with him. He told me he's felt like he's been 100% for about a month here, uh, but that's not the goal, right? They're, they've, they've been cautious with it. Uh, they're working him back. It's a regimented program to get him back. He participated in Pro Day, said he felt really, really good while he was out there. I think we're going to see him uh, in some of these exhibitions coming up. Maybe Friday we'll see, but I, I do think you'll see him on, on, uh, on next week against Purdue. Uh, time will tell on that, but he sure seems like a guy uh, that's ready to play. And hey, if he's out there mixing up in pro day, I think it's a really, really good sign. Uh, man, he had some interesting things to say. You know, he was talking to us about how he's evolved as a ball handler and he's, 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 a, he's a pick and roll ball handler now. He's added that into his bag. Uh, that's crazy. I mean, think about the possibilities of a Trevin Brazil and Jalen Graham pick and roll. Uh, that could be a lot of fun. So I'm kind of interested to see what that might look like. They kind of flashed it a little bit in the practice we got to go to uh, a couple weeks ago. They were doing that action near the elbow. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, you know, Eric Musselman's got some tricks up his sleeve. I think that could be one of them. Uh, man, uh, if he adds that kind of guard skill to his bag, uh, whew. You know, for those of us who thought that he was on his way to being a draft pick last year, we, we might be talking lottery picks, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with him, but hey, make sure he's 100% healthy. Get out there looking forward uh, to hopefully seeing him real, real soon. Caleb Battle, people have been wondering about KB. Uh, man, he broke his foot over the summer. He missed quite a bit of time. Uh, he was back. We got to see him at practice, but then he didn't play in the red-white game. He was getting some scans done. Uh, he's back at practice. He had some soreness in that foot. It sounds like it scared him maybe more than anything. He's been back at practice. He's expected to dress out on Friday for the exhibition uh, against UT Tyler. How much he's going to play, who knows, because he hasn't been practicing, but it sounds like he's good to go uh, and back on track for the season. That's really good because I think he's going to be a key player for this team. Uh, he's an absolute bucket getter at all three levels, and, and you're going to need those guys down the crunch time uh, in games. So uh, a lot of positive news there. Big shout-out to Eric Musselman, by the way. It's, you know, they fly in today. Uh, they got here around noon. Um uh, 
at, at 125, they start making the rounds, and it's just boom, 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 boom. I mean, you go from the podium to SEC Nation, to ESPN, to Sirius XM, and it's every 10 to 15 minutes they're rolling through somebody else. They got here early, uh, and, and Musk sat with local reporters at lunch for a half hour uh, and, and shot the breeze with us, answered questions, uh, joked, just, hang, just hung out with us. Um, let me tell you something. Nobody else here does that. Nobody. I've been here for two years now. Muss has done that for us for two years now, and I haven't seen another coach do it. That doesn't make him a bad guy. That just makes Eric Musselman different. Really, really appreciative. Uh, well, it, it, actually, it's probably better for me to say it makes you feel appreciated as a reporter uh, when the coach of the team that you cover, I think, recognizes that. He appreciates us covering the team, uh, and he's willing to sit down and chat with you, and it doesn't feel like a burden. It's just like guys, you know, just, just guys being dudes uh, hanging out and talking a little basketball. So I thought it was really cool. Uh, he deserves a shout out for that. And I think teams take on the personality of their coach. Guys, I really really think you're going to like this Razorback basketball team. I really do. Very, very talented, very, very big personalities on this team. They're fun. They joke around. They get along. There's going to be some great sound bites from them. I can guarantee you that. You can get your first opportunity to see them Friday night. Exhibition, Bud Walton Arena against Division II, uh, University of Texas at Tyler at 6.30 p.m. It's not a stream. It's not on TV. There's no radio broadcast. You got to go if you want to see them, but it's a great opportunity to get a first glimpse at these guys, and obviously the following Saturday, it's going to be nuts. Purdue, in that charity exhibition game, uh, the place might be sold out. Like, imagine being Purdue and coming into Bud Walton Arena uh, and seeing the madness that's going to ensue. They're going to be treating it like, a, like an NCAA tournament or a conference championship game uh, in Bud Walton. It's going to be absolutely nuts. I'm really, really looking forward to that, but hey, if you see me out here in Birmingham, uh, standing on top of a, of a roof or a patio somewhere, that means it's media day. It means basketball is right around the corner. We're almost there. Bear with us. 48 hours from the first exhibition. Can't wait. It's been Curtis Wilkerson with hogsports.com. Appreciate you guys as always for joining me. We'll be back with you soon.